Hi everyone, uh, this is Dr. E and I'm here with a D2L walkthrough video for you. Uh, first of all, welcome. Uh, this is a video where I'm just going to highlight those specific areas of D2L that we will utilize regularly in our course because I know some of you are taking multiple classes and it can be a little confusing and overwhelming uh, because each professor uses uh, D2L a little bit differently. So I wanted you to kind of get a visual on this uh, and uh, to just have, you know, a little bit of comfort heading into what may be a very overwhelming week. You'll see that I use a lot of Bitmojis, <laughs> so something to just kind of personalize the course. I do want to note that this is about the fifth time that I've tried to make this video, and um, there have been some power outages and things that are affecting this, so I'm working on my laptop now, but I don't think that should uh, affect the quality. It just means that I'm not working with um, video today. All right, so in the video, um, I want you to note that this is for both uh, English 2323, so if you are BritLit students, um, this video is for you along with uh, those of you in English 1301. I don't want anybody to be kind of surprised by what they see uh, because I'll be using one class as an example. So even if uh, we're looking at uh, English 2323's D2L area, those of you in English 1301 just know it will it will look very similar. So don't don't stress out about that and don't think you're watching the wrong video. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit just generally about D2L, but focus in on the content area, um, the mail function, as well as WebEx, because WebEx is how I'll do student success hours or office hours, the notifications features. Uh, and, you know, just touch on a few things here and there. So it's just hopefully something that you'll find useful. And I want you to know, because again, difficulties with power outages and whatnot, uh, you will need to watch a syllabus video this week. You know, there will be questions in the weekly quiz and you do have an assignment related to the syllabus. Um, so that video is going to be helpful, but I will probably get that loaded by noon on Monday, the first day of courses, August 28th. So if you don't see it there, please don't freak out. Just know that it's coming. Just wait for it, um, which is like my favorite Hamilton song, but that will only make sense to those of you who, who <laughs> are Hamilton fans. Anyhow, I'm going to jump right to D2L, and this is what uh, the course looks like. This is my British literature area, but those of you, again, in uh, rhetoric and composition, yours will look very similar. Um, we have some new homepage options in D2L, which is really nice because it allows us to have this visual table of contents. Um, so it's nice to just kind of have that here. You can quick reference things again with the Bitmojis. I do want to note, and hopefully you've come across this before, just because it says 33% and one of three topics completed, that it does not have anything to do with assignments completed. So sometimes in the past I've had students who go, well, it shows 100%. That just means that you visited those areas, not that any work was completed. So please don't allow that to confuse you. I'm not sure why D2L continues to do that. Um, this is the announcements area. And so this is where if there's ever a change to the course schedule or if there's anything interesting going on that I think would be helpful for you to know about, I will post right here. So do make sure that this is the first place you visit when you come into your courses, right? So. Make sure that you're logging into My Lone Star and you're coming to the course homepage. And the way you can tell that is if you click on the course name that's up here, it will reset you to the main page. So again, you can see if there are any announcements, that kind of thing. So I'm going to make sure that you're seeing this as a student because I don't want this to be too confusing. Um, I do <laughs> not want you to be confused. So if you go to the top here, we have some different tabs about the content, grades, course activities. That's where you will submit assignments. Um, that's where you can find your quizzes. Collaboration is where you'll find uh, discussions. So in D2L, there are a few different ways to get to the same area. Um, so it's really helpful just to take some time to click around, which is, especially if you're new to D2L, I hope you'll take some time to just, you know, click and see what, what's out there. So if we go to the content area, this is where we will spend most of our time in the course. Uh, if you open and you see this, you know, you're in the table of contents and you have a list right here. 
but I want you to know that these are the same things that are shown if you go back to the main page by clicking here in your visual table of contents. So again, if you log in and you just need quick book information, you can click here or the start here module. Um, it only shows, I think, four at a time, but those will be updated as the, as the semester progresses. So going back to content area, I want you to note that on the left-hand side in the table of contents, there is a link for book information, uh, which you can click. And again, those of you in English 1301, you'll see some different information here. I do want you all to take some time to look at the Start Here module. These are called modules over here. Uh, and this is just at a, at a glance. If you want to meet your instructor, um, find out any information about me, um, there's information here, but then there's also, again, quick access to things like the book, um, the course calendar, and then there's a whole section on course FAQs. I think this is an area that's often overlooked by students, but it's just helpful to kind of get a sense of those those typical questions you may have in a class, right? Whether that's a literature course or a writing course, you know, should I ask for help? What if I continue to feel overwhelmed? That kind of thing. Sorry, I have a dog who just sneezed. <laughs> um, so take some time to, to go through that when you're able. Again, I know it's an overwhelming time. Um, so just take some breaks, look at a few things, come back, look at a few more. There is a module here for the syllabus schedule and rubrics. So um, you always have a copy of your syllabus here. And I put here, you know, know that for major assignments, I have left the videos and materials from previous courses so that you can kind of get a look at what those assignments were. But I do want you to note that I, I make changes. So this is just, these are, you know, I want you to consider them placeholders aside from the syllabus and whatnot. Um, and the mind map materials, those will remain the same. But for those major assignments, I just want you to kind of get a sense of what you're what you're in for. And some of that information, of course, is also on uh, the syllabus, which will have its own video. There's a whole module on student success. Make sure that you get familiar. Uh, there's a whole area for technology support. We have a whole area for um, academic support. So we try to, again, make this as approachable as possible. Laptop checkout, Office 365. These are links that are available here, but they are also available in other areas. So again, just click around when you are able to. In, this is, in the student success area as well, um, there are some other things. So the academic support, there may be, you know, some information that you'll find useful in the future, that kind of thing. Uh, tips, tricks, and tools, that kind of info. And then there's an MLA help um, module. And so I have a lot of examples and information that are typically uh, geared more towards English 1301, uh, but I find that they can also be helpful for uh, our literature courses as well. So just if you ever have any, any MLA questions or concerns, lots of examples, lots of information here. So just click around, see what's there. There's a module on D2L and technology. And so um, I mentioned this in the, uh, the quick start video, the VLAC or Virtual Learning Assistance Center and OTS links are super important. Please bookmark those, please. Um, and then there are also any, any kind of help you need with D2L. There are lots of links that will help you. You know, if you need to, if you have a Mac, please make sure this is in your toolbox <laughs> of how to convert Apple Pages documents into PDFs because D2L does not accept, um, pages documents. And then you'll start to see every single week once we go through them. I don't work ahead. I just, my brain can't function that way. So we go week by week in the course. Um, you do have a view of our, you know, our schedule for the course. If you go to the syllabus rubrics, um, you can see a schedule, but note that at least at the start of the semester, I only start with the first five weeks because I really need to get a sense of how quickly or you know, how slowly perhaps we need to move th through different ideas. So I get more of a sense of our pace by about week five. But if you go to week one, you will always see a bit of the schedule here. And then there will always be a to watch, to review, and a to do area. So this is everything you'll want to watch that week. Okay. 
This is, you know, items that you'll want to review. It may be video or documents, that kind of thing. And these are the things that you'll do. So again, ignore the check marks here. Don't let that fool you. Just make sure you're clicking around to different things, okay? And again, you can get to those same areas by using the tabs at the top. So if you wanted to go to quizzes that way, you certainly can. All right, so that's the content area. I do wanna take just a brief moment to talk about mail. So if you go up here, there's an instant messages option, and this is where you go to email. And it looks like any other, any other email. So if you click compose, it's going to open a window for you. Go ahead and leave the subject line as is because it really helps your professors know what course you're in. We teach a lot of different courses, uh, but maybe add something to the beginning of the subject line like assignment question. Or make sure you're typing well. <laughs> You know, just give us a sense. And you'll want to know the person's name rather than using the address book. So for me, you can start typing my first or last name. It'll auto-populate, and you can choose either one of these. That's fine. Okay, and just make sure that you are going to the bottom and clicking send. Okay. What I do want you to note as well, that if you go up here to the top and you click on your name, you can select notifications. And this is where you can find information on the Pulse app. It's a great tool to have, but please know that it's not great for every single thing. It's good to have on your phone and to check on things, but it's really difficult to fully function with just the app. Okay, so if you're using devices, I definitely recommend that you log in from um, Chrome or you know a web browser, though Chrome is the best. Um, what you'll want to do for notifications is register your mobile. So if you click here, you'll just enter all of your information, your carrier. When you click save, it'll then send you that text confirmation that you're probably used to by now. And once you have that set up, you can select this. You can't populate this right now, but once your mobile is registered, you can select these different notifications that you'll want to receive. Do not click everything. So if you select every single thing, you know, this is for email, if you choose email, it's going to be constant. I go in and tinker with D2L, other professors do. So every time something changes, you don't want to get a text message if you select SMS. For our class, definitely announcements. I think those are, those are pretty important because if things change, that's where uh, it's good to know. And any of the other selections you might want, but don't select everything. <laughs> and then make sure you're clicking save. Okay, that's really important. All right. If I go to the top, the next thing I want to show you is WebEx, and this is where you will make um, those student success hour visits. So if you click on WebEx, I'm in the collaboration area. WebEx is just like something like Zoom. Um, it just allows you to set up a, a virtual meeting. So you'll click appointment booking. Okay, I want you to make sure that your time zone is set. A lot of times students have said, well, I went to meet with you and you weren't there and it's because they had the wrong time zone setting. So just make sure that you are in Central Time or Chicago. You wanna click on appointment booking and there you will see for each day. Um, so I believe I have it set up for Mondays through Thursdays, two to 3.30 maybe. I'll double check. You'll see those when, when I start to enter those and then you can just click on them and I'll cover this in a future video just to make sure that that's clear. Um, because I, I don't want you to have any confusion because I really definitely want you to meet with me if you have questions, concerns, or just, you know, want to get some input on anything. So I think that's most of the information that is useful, at least getting us started. And as things progress, I'll, I'll provide more information when needed. But remember that uh, that syllabus video is coming. So take a nice break after watching this and then go ahead and move into the week one video. Uh, and I will see y'all there.